Art of Relationships radio show is copyrighted. No one is to use any part of the show without express written consent from myself, Greg Dzinski, or the Art of Relationships. Thank you. Welcome to the Art of Relationships radio show. Licensed relationship and sex counselor Greg Dzinski will cover crucial elements in rebuilding emotional and physical intimacy. Plus, help in reigniting the passion in your romantic relationships. Single people don't feel left out. This show is also you in promoting confidence and self-love. Greg promises that this show is for you and to help listeners become more fulfilled, healthier, and happier in your relationship and lives. Live calls and chats are very welcome in helping you with your challenges. There will be an end to those tit-for-tat arguments. Greg gets to the root of couples' challenges in a rapid, matter-of-fact format, plus applies compassion and humor. Join in discovering how to improve your romantic relationship and your own life. Listen, laugh, and climax. Greg is a licensed professional counselor in the state of Michigan, though to most, he's known as Detroit's love guru. (laughs) Yes, I am Detroit's love guru. Guru Greg Dzinski, licensed professional counselor here in the state of Michigan. Ah, how many people, when you talk about ooh, the little intro there, um, how many people would be interested in climaxing more than they do already in their love life or how many people, single people out there, would be maybe interesting in finding that deep, passionate, oh my God, sensually fulfilling love life you've always craved? Ooh, how many people are with me out there? Would I love that? Hell yeah. Now, I'm not talking the intensity and just climaxing because of uh, Menage de Moi meaning one, meaning (laughs) self-gratification. I'm I'm talking about, you know, having the intensity of the love life you've always created. Now, the topic of the show, of course, is the intensity of love. And we're going to get into maybe perhaps myths, um... Ooh, maybe some truths about love life, what you should do. And how many people have dealt with, you know, with love intensity? You have to understand relationships, yes, they are work. They take a lot of work. They take a lot of self-insight and ability to look at yourself, look at maybe what you are doing to contribute to the toilet being flushed on your relationship as I laugh about that. Yeah. When you're in the dynamics of, you know, the relationship, it's very easy to start poking fun or maybe belittling, criticizing your partner, the person you loved without, you know what, but you're not willing to take a hit yourself and take responsibility what the hell is going on in your love life to reach the intensity that um, you want, okay? Um, So I want to get into this episode. uh, It's going to get into potential myths that you would be, um, you know what? Is it possible to keep the intensity, the 24-7? And we talk about, um, you know, different stages of love. And I touch about it, you know, human sexuality and stuff, whatever. Actually, I'm going to be starting the summer term teaching it uh, tomorrow evening. And we talk about, you know, the different, you know, is there consummate love? Is, you know, Sternberg's, uh, you know, different love styles, right? Consummate love, um, infactious or infactionation, um, you know, is there companionate love? Is there passionate love? You know, there's all these different styles of love, and which one do you want? And is it possible to be able to have the intensity of love of the lifetime? Can you have it 24-7? Or how many people go into it and they expect to have the intensity, right? The full-blown passion 24-7 in your love life. However, 
You know what? When it doesn't, and you have an off day, two days, whatever, and I mean, you love each other, right? But you're tired. You're exhausted. Now you're thinking, oh, my God, that intensity is not there. Therefore, we're in trouble, and it's not going to work. Or so many people, they get on the attitude about, guess what? We're going to panic, and you know what? We're going to sort of force it, right? And all of a sudden, the other person starts distancing, starts maybe bashing back or starts, you know, pushing back. And now, ooh, you have more problems hitting the fan, if you will. And you look at uh, the dynamics. A while ago, I had a very intense, and there was a lot of, um, we loved each other. There was a huge passion, whatever. But there was a big issue where I don't think that individual was able to look at herself and look at the situation, what was going on in a relationship, what she caused, very defensive, very whatever. And it's like, God, you know what? If we were able to both look at ourselves and look at the intensity of love that was shared, you know what? What would it take to open and honestly look at one another and look at, you know what, it ebb and flows with the love life, right? With the marriage, with the living together, that type of aspect, the ebb and flow and understand that and talk and work together and not take a week to look at yourself and look at, you know what, oh my God, I see your point. You know what, oh my God, I understand what I did, I'm sorry, and it takes a week to do that. That resentment builds up, and then you look at, okay, we don't have this intensity that we once did, then bash in, you know, infatuation, love, if you will. Hey, welcome, Princess Fu. Um, You got to get rid of that picture of uh, lips, or if it's your lips, sucking on a freaking sucker. That's just too damn seductive. And I um, get too distracted. (laughs) Um, Welcome, Fu. Uh, Princess Fu, welcome. This is the Art of Relationships Radio Show. And I am Detroit's love guru, Greg Dzinski, in private practice, downtown Detroit. You can join us at Princess Fu's already in live chat, and there should be others joining in shortly. You can join in on the live chat through the Spreaker app for Android Apple devices. That is S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. Um, you just sign up with your Facebook account with, uh, you know, like a lot of other apps, no big deal. You join the show. This one is the Intensity of Love. There will be a red live button so you know it's live and you click on the chat bubble and bam you're able to enter chat ask questions give me your feedback anything you want to talk about like i said it is the art of relationships show is for you or you can go on spreaker.com and search for my name greg dzinski d-u-d-z-i-n-s-k I or search for the Art of Relationships radio show on Spreaker.com, and you can find it and join us on live chat as well. And as always, finally, I was able to, what do I want to say? I got the tech issue fixed, so I can take live callers again. Damn power cord, and it took a while to find one and get one for the mixer. <laughs> so people are like, what the hell is that? Right? What's talking about? Anyways, the tech issue is back. So you can give me a call, 313-614-9498, okay? So please, please, give me a shout. Give me a call, 313 614 94 Nine eight, and as always, you can ooh join us on the live chat. We're talking about the intensity of love, okay? So I want to, um, you know, how many people um, do you look at? 
the intensity love. Oh my God, we got to be there. We got to be intense. We got to be up each other's booties 24 seven or it's not going to work. And you look at, you know what? Oh my God, if it's not that we're in trouble or this relationship, it ain't going to work. And there's some people out there and I did a show, um, a while ago about love addiction, right? And I did, uh, you know, I was with, uh, oh, crap. I can't even think about uh, what the name of the show was, too, um, about addiction and overcoming addiction. There we go. On another network, I was a guest host, and we're talking about, you know, sex addiction and addiction to love. And we look at so many people want that intensity of love feeling, the dopamine levels, the endorphin levels, right? They kick up and oxytocin levels kick up in our brain and we become addicted to it. We always want that feeling. And if it's gone, now what happens? We end up looking at the dynamics to where, oh my God, something's wrong and I always need that to feel alive, to feel loved. And if it dissipates a little bit, that means that relationship is not worth it it's not going to work, so I book, and we're constantly looking for that to keep that up. Now, we're going to get into the myths, the attitudes about what real love means and the intensity. Now, what does intensity mean as far as love to you, and is it okay? Like, can you experience good, awesome life without bad? right? Can you do that? And I want you to look at this philosophy a little bit. Can you experience good or awesome without going through negative stuff or going through bad stuff? How do you know the difference between good or bad if you don't experience both? Now, I don't want everybody to go through bad stuff. Not at all. And I deal with a lot of trauma issues, grief and loss issues, you know, people going through divorce, lost loved ones, uh, witnessing maybe a suicide, witnessing a loved one's death. And it's very traumatic for a lot of people. So we look at, you know, the element. Is it fair enough to say that we would not, as humans, that we would not be able to feel um, good in our life or passion or love without maybe feeling the bad, the negative as well. And sometimes we dwell on the negative and we sort of measure it up against the intensity of love that we want, that we fantasize, that maybe we have this unrealistic expectation or a myth of what love is. And if one day we're off, we panic and all of a sudden we start arguments. We start looking at issues that maybe don't need to be addressed. Or maybe more often than not, those issues are exaggerated. And all of a sudden you go into, like I mentioned before, you run into a panic mode and then it's like, oh no, the shit hits the fan. What am I going to do? Because I don't feel the intensity. I don't feel his love. I don't feel that she really desires me um, a hundred percent like she did yesterday or the day before. And oh my God, I'm going to panic. She must want somebody else. He must love somebody else. He doesn't love me. No. Um, everybody talks about, yeah, I know Greg, the realities of love. We have good times. We have bad times, right? And that's what I said. Can you cherish the good times and relish the good times? And they can help you propel you through maybe the bad times, the the harder times, the more stressful times in a relationship. And when it's all done and said, the intensity of love is the balance of good and bad. And can you be okay with that, right? Now, do the good times, do the maybe the good, the magical intensity of love that you share, is that there are more often then it's not. And how many people, we talk, I talked to an individual on Facebook through Private Messenger, talked about, you know, after 25 years, do you still have the intensity of love? And what does that mean? And 
you know, does it mean that you need to be okay, like society's rule of thumb, if you will? You know what? You need to be okay that the intensity of love dissipates. It dies over time. But can you evolve that? Can you grow the intensity to mean more of a, a deeper understanding of one another? Or maybe does passion ebb and flow? Or are you able to look at the intensity of the relationship can change? That's what I want to hit on and get into and set up maybe realistic expectations, not only you know about me or for me or what my beliefs are. What do they mean for you now? Ooh, does the intensity of love also mean the intensity of sex? <gasps> do the two go hand in hand? I would definitely love to hear your feedback. And I want to hear some questions and comments going on in the live chat. Again, download the Spreaker app. If you are listening to this maybe via Facebook or the Spreaker.com uh, website, please join us in live chat and throw your questions out there. And you can also, if you're listening live on a different modem, SoundCloud, TuneIn, whatever, that you can give me a call, 313-614-9498. You can also text me at that number and, you know, throw out a question. If you're a little shy, I'm going to protect your privacy and, you know, your confidentiality is of utmost importance to me. So I want you to be able to look at, um, you know, throw out your questions. Don't be shy. You hear me mention people in chat. They gave me permission to use their names previously, a long time ago, okay? So that's why you hear names. So don't worry about your name being thrown out there, people calling out your name, okay? Um, so when I want you to look at what does the intensity of love mean to you? And I am going to take a quick break. Yes! Oh, my God! My bladder is already erupting. <laughs> and I will be back in a few moments. This is Detroit's Love Guru Coming to you live from Detroit City, the Art of Relationships radio show. And I will be back shortly. Thank you. You're listening to the Art of Relationships radio show on the podcast Detroit Network. If you're looking for that unique, cool fashion statement, check out Shoes by Shea on Facebook. She has hand-painted, uh, hand-designed canvas shoes for you, your loved one. It's an inspirational piece unique to your own taste. Check out Shoes by Shea on Facebook. Again, that's Shoes by Shea on Facebook. This is just another song You'll never hear about a girl I've never met This is just another life Whispered in your ear so you'll think that I can make it This is just another ride Taken by surprise with no clear end in sight This is just an empty line You've heard a million times that I've used to make it right A chance meeting in a parking lot Getting high off of a pointless talk You remind me of the songs I used to fall asleep to A perfect vision of the melodies that I would sing to And I've been using Message through the radio. This is just- 
just a sad attempt An evening spent at trying to catch your eye and this is me crying out for attention So you don't just pass me by This is just a lucid dream I've made to seem like the best parts of life and this is just an empty hand With spaces for your fingers laced with mine Excuse me, I think you're the one I'm meant to find in this life but I've been lost for quite a while Cause you remind me of the songs I used to fall asleep to A perfect vision of the melodies that I would sing to And I've been using Every trick I know To send a message through the radio And I've been talking to strangers Trying to find the same kind of thrill that you provide I'll leave it alone I'll give it some time My voice sucks, people. <laughs> I am definitely not a singer, and you do not want me ever to sing. Anyways, <laughs> that was Skyway Traffic, just another song you'll never hear. Check them out, Reverb Nation, Facebook, and, of course, YouTube. Again, Skyway Traffic, just another song you'll never hear and we're back live i'm um, detroit's love guru i can't, almost forgot my name <laughs> greg dozinski and this is the art of relationships radio show we're talking about the intensity of love is it possible that you know what you keep the intensity going. Like I mentioned right before break, we're talking about, you know, someone in a 25-year marriage, you know, talked about the intensity, still having the love for her husband, you know, and the passion and everything still going, which is great. Yeah, I'm jealous. Um, very jealous. I would love that. But you look at the situation to where, you know what, what is driving the intensity, and we're looking at the myths behind the intensity, and what does intensity of love mean to you? Does it mean you want to uh, hump each other? You want to, you know, make love with each other three days a week, or I'm sorry, three times a day? What I'm saying, three days a week, is that enough? No, <laughs> that you you look at, <laughs> oh boy, you look at the situation to where. Um, you know, three days a week, three days, <laughs> three times a day. I can't even, I'm tripping over my freaking lips already from seeing clients all day. But, um, you know, at the beginning, yeah, you want to do it three times a day, freaking every day of the week, whatever. Does that mean it dies down because it gets boring or 
does it really have to do with biochemistry? Does it have to do with the oxytocin that's going on and dopamine levels that are triggered, that fire, that in love feeling, the intensity that's always there, that, you know why, is it unrealistic or Again, is it unhealthy to always have that dopamine rush? Think about this, people. If you have the adrenaline rush that, um, you know, you have adrenaline rush and it's always there, whatever, how soon will it take for your body to burn out? your emotional state? You know, when you have the intensity of the adrenaline rush, that's why it doesn't last that long. If it did, your body's going to burn out. You're emotionally going to be drained real quick. That's why the adrenaline pump, if you will, will end up, it's short-lived because it knows that intensity will wreak havoc on your body, okay? Big time. You know, your sympathetic nervous system, and I'm not getting into all the, too much of the biochemistry and uh, neurological aspects, but the sympathetic nervous system, you know, it's designed to fight, flight, whatever, adrenaline push. It's not designed to take it 24-7 of the adrenaline rush or it's going to burn out and you are just going to crash. So the intensity of love, if you look at that, the intensity of love, can it be more like a flow, like a a wave, if you will. Now, I'm not talking like a tidal wave. I'm not talking, you know, in China or Asian terms. Are you able to look at it, uh, you know, as a tsunami over there versus tidal wave to us um, or a hurricane that, you know, can you ebb and flow most of the time? You know, can you have the passion most of the time. Can you have the intensity of love? And Princess Fu mentioned on the live chat that I want to always have that tingle when I see him. Oh, did you say tinkle? Or did you say, oh, that was tingle. Sorry, Princess Fu. <laughs> that tinkle. Oh, my God, I get so excited whenever I tinkle my pants. Now, I'm teasing Princess Fu. But you look at, join Princess Fu on chat, too. Download the Spreaker app or go to Spreaker.com. Search for the show, The Art of Relationships radio show, or my name, Greg Dzinski, D-U-D-Z-I-N-S-K-I. I would love you to join us in live chat. Your name, your identity will be kept secret unless you give me permission to mention it, okay? I want you to be able to look at, um, you know, the intensity. Everybody goes into it, the romantic films, the romantic movies, TV shows, Lifetime movies, and all this stuff. I'm not talking the psycho killers, but um, everyone wants that love feeling, the passion, everything 24-7. I don't think. I'm going to tell you right now from a professional stance, in a fantasy realm, would I love it? Would everybody love it? Absolutely. Is it realistic? Absolutely not. So I want you to sort of get a hold of yourself. You know what? Start grabbing yourself by the shoulders, by the hair, or whatever. I want you to shake that myth right out of you that the passion, the intensity um, of the in love feeling it is impossible to keep 24-7, 365. So I want you to redefine the intensity of love and what it looks at, you know, and everybody has their own view, their own definition, which is fine. What they mean about the intensity, right? Intensity of love doesn't mean the intensity that you are always going to have each other's back, that you love each other, that, you know what, can it, be possible when you kiss each other passionately that you always feel like um, Princess Fu mentioned that that tingle you have with your partner. I think that can be true. I'm not talking just a peck on the cheek, but can it be the intensity that you love each other? You can feel each other's soul and each other's kiss. I think that is possible that that can be there. of the time, if not more, does it take work? Yes. 
but it takes more of a deep understanding of yourself and it takes more of appreciation for you to accept your partner for who they are. I'm not talking that, you know what, they beat your ass, they're abusive, they treat you like crap. Oh, I'm going to accept that. No, I'm talking about, you know, with their faults and their, you know, little errors in life. We all have them. But outside of that, you know they're doing the best to treat you well, to show you they love you and have passion for you and to be able to keep that going. And can you, you know, when they kiss you on the shoulder after 25 years, ooh, do you still feel the tingle that Princess Fu talk about? They still do it for you. Or do you think that is a myth? I don't think that aspect is a myth. I'm thinking that is there. I'm stating that that is there more times than not. And the intensity of love means that you also trust and trust each other that, right, you're not going to talk poorly about each other to other people, relatives, friends, whatever. Um, You're not going to bash each other, okay? Um, You're not going to bash each other, okay? So that's going to happen, um, that you're going to stop, that you know that what it's going to take to survive the relationship and to make it even better, more deep connected. And that's what I mean about the intensity. It means that you know each other well, that you can accept. If your person is pissed off and they want time alone, you know what? I get it. I'm not going to panic. They want time alone. I know they still love me. They're just upset. They're mad at me right now. That doesn't mean that they don't love me. That doesn't mean they're going to abandon me. The intensity of love encompasses my you know, philosophy. And in my book, sees that total connection about the total connection. That doesn't mean, when you have a total connection, that doesn't mean it's there 24-7, 365 damn days a year. It means that the balance, right? It's there most of the time. It's there more often than not. That is crucial. And what are you doing to keep that the intensity of love going in your relationship? Or do you, you know, are you one the panic? Oh my God, he didn't. Um, you know what? He didn't call me during his lunch today, or she didn't call me during her lunch or break today, um, you know what, now send you pain. Oh, my God, oh, my God, they don't love me. They don't love me. Oh, my God, what a jerk, what a dick, what a whatever. And, uh, son, you know what, I don't feel this, so I'm pissed, I'm upset, whatever. That's not the intensity of love. You know what, you need to look at, okay, maybe something happened. Maybe they got talking, whatever. Maybe they got, maybe they, they were so busy they weren't able to get that break. They weren't able to get that lunch today. Um, you know, do you ever look at that? No big deal. And you hold on to yourself and you know that they love you. They care about you because they're showing it majority of the time. They're showing the intensity of love. Now, what I mean, and I purposely did this when I said the intensity of love means how many people when the infatuation, right? You love, you rip each other's close up. Oh my God, I want that too. I want that there more times than that. But when it's not there, you know, you're sick, you're tired, you might, you're just eh, maybe having a relaxed day. No big deal that you don't panic. You know that your partner loves you. You know they desire you. And this is the grounding, if you will, the grounding of the intensity of love versus that adrenaline rushed in love. Oh my God, oh my God, I can't wait till they call. I want to talk to them. I talked to them five minutes ago and I can't wait to see her again. I just left her. You know what? That's great. That's whatever. But that is not realistic. And a lot of people look at that. When that built up intensity, if you want to say that's infatuation or that is um, romantic love, according to you know, Sternberg's theory of loves, um, you know, styles of love, whatever, romantic love, the um, infatuation or infatuous love, 
that those intensities are great, but how often can you keep those there 24 7, 365 again? And not only that, do you look at what are you doing to secure or maybe to manifest the intensity of love in your relationship? And do you ever talk about the intent? What does that mean to you? And what does it mean to your husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, partner, whatever the dynamics are, are you able to look at, you know, do you define it? It goes in with the expectations of love and how you want to feel and what is going on to keep it. Yes, the intensity of love creates a lot of work, right? When people hear work, they freak out. It shouldn't be. It should be automatic. It should be, oh my God, it should be like freaking static electricity when you're rubbing your feet on the carpet, right? When you were maybe kids, maybe you do that as a dog. You got socks on and you drag your feet. Now some, <laughs> you freaking zap somebody with static electricity. That intensity of love, you know what? I, I want it. Oh my, I would love it on a daily basis. So if you have any very attractive, very uh, sexual, Single ladies out there, give me a call. <laughs> Hit me up on Facebook now. But <laughs> you look at the elements. You, I'm laughing. But you look at the elements that, you know what, it takes work. And you can have, you know what, you can have okay sex. It doesn't have to have the intensity of the animalistic rip your clothes off passion all the time. That doesn't mean that the intensity of love in your relationship is gone. No. I want you to redefine the intensity, what that means to you, that you have those in love feelings and that you can look at each other and you can see the love in your eyes and the soulfulness of the eyes. And I talk about this, you know, when you're making love with somebody, you're able to stare at them or, you know, giving them oral pleasure. You're able to stare at each other and feel the love and the intensity and even the ooh, 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 maybe the the dirtiness in their eye that they just get off pleasure in you that way. And I think that is freaking hot. <clears throat> now, you know, you can have that most of the time. Yes. But you can also have okay sex where maybe the wham, the oh my God, the fireworks and everything going off. Talk about the 4th of July holiday coming up and fireworks and all that stuff. Is it okay if the intensity of love and sex and everything. Maybe you have sparklers once in a while versus the freaking whistlers and uh, wham, bam, boom, fireworks lighting up the whole sky. But that does mean that you're sharing each other. And the intensity of love between you two can involve that you're sharing each other emotionally. Yes, even the bad times. Remember? The bad times, maybe you know, or the stressful times, maybe those are needed to help you, right, be grateful for the great time and to recognize the great time and to embrace those, okay? I want you of all necessarily means to look at those aspects, okay? To be able to look at the intensity of your relationship and what's it take to hit those versus, you know, freaking out if, you know, your partner doesn't see you and wants to rip your clothes off every time they see you, right? Is that a myth? Is it unrealistic? Yes, it is. But I also want you to recognize that the intensity of love means that you are more deeply connected, that you, you know what, maybe Two years ago, a year ago, you're afraid to talk about sex. You're afraid to, to bring up stuff that might tick each other off or hurt their feelings, so you're not going to bring it up. Now the intensity of love in your love life means, you know what? I am able to bring that up now. I am able to bring up something that hurts my feelings, pisses me off, where before I was afraid to hide that. That embraces the intensity of love. So I want you to look at things a different way. I don't want you to sell yourself out. I'm not talking about settling for mediocre relationship or mediocre sex life. Not at all. I'm looking at the averages overall, and I'm looking at redefining the intensity of love in your relationship or in your marriage. I'm not talking about, and I never, ever 
will tell you to sell yourself out and to settle, okay? Hell to the no, not at all, okay? Um, I'm going to take a little breather, a um, little quick break, and I will be back shortly. This is the Art of Relationships Radio, so thanks for listening. Be back shortly. Thank you. You're listening to the Art of Relationships Radio Show. On the podcast, Detroit Network. If you're looking for that unique, cool fashion statement, check out Shoes by Shea on Facebook. She has hand-painted, uh, hand-designed canvas shoes for you, your loved one. It's an inspirational piece unique to your own taste. Check out Shoes by Shea on Facebook. Again, that's Shoes by Shea on Facebook. Rev, right time. 
Um, Rev Right Time, everybody. Check them out on ooh, Reverb Nation. Also, Facebook and YouTube, Reverb Nation. Motel Sex, baby. And a huge uh, welcome to... Um, or a huge welcome. Skyway Traffic as well. Check them out as well. That was the first time. Uh, just another song you'll never hear. We are back live on the Art of Relationships radio show. Um, and this is Greg Dzinski. We're talking about the intensity of... Um, we're talking about the intensity of love and what it means to you and try to redefine and get rid of the myth. And a lot of people, they need to have a realistic expectation of what the intensity of love means. This does not mean that your adrenaline is pumping 24-7, 365 days a year. And a lot of people, um, a while back I did a show on, you know, sex addiction and addicted love aspects where maybe these people, they want that constant adrenaline rush and they will do anything. They'll destroy their lives because if they don't get it, they feel something's out of whack. They feel something's not right. They're not being loved. So they need this fix 24-7, 365 days a year. And need with we talk about the intensity of love being a healthy Manner, And I said, you still can have the tingling sensation that Princess Fru brought up in the live chat a while ago, that you can have the tingly sensation. I'm all about being with someone for 10 years, 15 years, and when you kiss each other, you still feel each other's souls, and you feel the love each other has, right, for the other. I think you can still have that. I absolutely believe that is possible. And that's where I try to get couples back to that element if they lost it, right? Because I think the intensity of love gets killed by missed expectations, right? Maybe not only missed, I should say, unrealistic expectations that you need to look at, okay, we're going to have bad days. We're going to have rough days. That is normal. Now, we need to look at the foundation that we love each other, we care about each other, and we need to make each other realize that on a daily basis. So the intensity of love can be enhanced, right, by being romantic, by sharing. You know what? You know what? Being appreciative of one another. Don't take each other for granted. And you look at if the intensity, oh my God, rip each other's clothes off. I want to be with you. Oh God, throw you up against the wall. I want that. And if it's not there, 99% of the time, don't panic. It's okay that you can have, I call it mediocre or not even mediocre, okay sex that you're both sharing each other. That doesn't mean You don't love each other. That doesn't mean it's not there. A lot of people, it's ironic because when you talk about intensity of love, they talk about they can have sex all the time or majority of the time, and physically it feels good, but when you're done, they feel empty because the emotional connection is not there. Maybe the emotional trust is not there, that they have each other's backs. You know what? Something is missing, and that's where I want to get people. When I talk about the intensity of love, hitting them up, right, that the passion and the fire of the relationship is there more times than not, where you don't panic if it is gone one day. Maybe it's gone, you know, two days a week um, that you don't panic. You know and you trust it's going to come back. You trust in the love that you have for each other. You trust in the acceptance of each other and of their relationship. And how do you maintain that? That is crucial, right? Are you taking each other for granted? Are you doing the things you used to do at the beginning of the relationship to keep the fire and the passion going? Are you still getting love notes from your husband, your boyfriend? Hey, screw that. What about from your girlfriend or wife? 
Are they doing that? Are they looking sexy for you anymore, right? Are they doing nice things for you? Or maybe they're still doing nice things for you, but now, you know what? Eh, they're supposed to. I take it for granted. They are, you know what? They're supposed to. It's my husband. It's the manly's duty. It's the woman's duty. You know what? That you start taking things for granted that you used to be in awe with at the beginning. Oh my God, it's so nice. They do this. Thank you so much. You really show me you love me. Now we're taking it for granted. Now, you know what? Ugh. Those are the things that will kill the intensity of love in your relationship or your marriage, right? The intensity of love, that can be honed. That can be reinforced. And it also could be, you know, hey, welcome. We got a new listener in uh, live chat. The Midnight Club is in the house. And, um, you know, I welcome them back. And I don't want to mention... Uh, his name right away. I can't remember if he gave me permission to use his name or not. So if you're listening, you want me to say your name or you're okay with it, that's okay. But welcome Midnight Club! Yeah, baby. Um, a huge following Midnight Club. I welcome them, a bunch of guys, crazy guys. Man, I love them. They're crazy and they're hilarious as hell. So welcome to live chat and people listening. And I want to look at um, you know, what are you doing? You know, do you take each other for granted by, you know, the intensity of love? You look at, oh my God, it was great. They do this for me. They do that for me. That's so awesome. That's so great. Now, a year goes down, goes by, or maybe 25 years into a marriage that you look at, you know what? What's the big deal? That's what she's supposed to do. That's what he's supposed to do. And you stop looking at the intensity and the uh, the intensity of the appreciation in the relationship in your love life and i think a lot of the intensity of love gets killed because those things go out the window they go to down the toilet that you start taking each other for granted and i think that is a big big thing that kills the intensity of your love life and then pretty soon you feel like they don't care for you you're taken for granted You are maybe, you know what, the compliments. They're not showing you they care anymore, and you don't feel accepted by them. And there's a difference between being accepted and being taken for granted. Being taken for granted in a relationship, even in a friendship, people, that, um, you know what, that doesn't mean you're accepted. You start feeling like you're used, you're being taken advantage of, and when that starts happening, you're you're not going to feel good about yourself and you're not going to feel good about your partner because you feel like, you know what, they don't even care. They don't care I took the garbage out. They don't care I did dishes, did laundry, cooked dinner. They don't care, you know what, I'm supposed to go to work 50, 60 hours a week. That's what I'm supposed to do. And that, ooh, most people thought I was going to talk about the man. There's women out there that work those hours too. And the guy, so what? I work the same. And you take each other for granted and you look at, so what? You know why? You need to flip that script around and you need to start looking at the elements to where how do you show each other um you know, how do you show each other that, you know what, you still are appreciative for each other? That, you know what, when was the last time you actually stared at each other in the eyes without, you know what, you know, you know the look I'm talking about, people. You stare at each other like, I want to kill you. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> you know what, the stare, you look where you're pissed off. So I'm staring at you like I just, I just want to freaking, I hate you. (laughs) I'm not talking about that. Look, those happen because, guess what? That you don't feel respected. The intensity of love is sort of gone because you're taking each other for granted. You're not accepting one another. And you're not looking at the gestures that maybe you thought you were in off with years ago or that you thought were awesome. Now you're like, oh, what's the big deal? You know what? Though that's where the intensity gets lost, and I tell you, you can 
reinvent. You can reignite those aspects by recognizing the simple gestures you do. And you're going to feel the intensity of love and the intensity of respect and the intensity of acceptance return in your relationship once again. You need to look at, you know what, what am I doing to make my partner feel accepted, to make him feel appreciated in the relationship? Or do you start looking, you know what, that's what an adult does, that's what a woman does, that's what you know a 30-year-old, a 40-year-old should do, that you start taking it for granted and you start looking at, you know what, Ugh. or how many people out there are listening to the show now, maybe you feel this way, but you don't know how to put it into words. You just can't put your finger on it. You can't, you know, maybe define it. You can't place it um, into words or terms. You just feel this angst, this fr- frustration. You feel this, oh my God, I feel pissed off. I don't even want to see him or her anymore. And maybe this will help you maybe put it in the terms. Say, you know what? The intensity of love is gone. I get it, but you need to look at why. Maybe I feel like I'm being taken for granted. I'm looked at as, you know what? Yeah, it's supposed to be my job. And I'm all about, you know, people look at, yeah, that's your job. You shouldn't be rewarded. You shouldn't be praised with everything you do. I'm I'm not I get that. And I'm not saying if you're looking for a that a boy, that a girl all the time in the real world, you are sadly mistaken, and that's not always going to happen. That's part of self-love and looking at, you know you did a good job. You know, you know, I, I took the trash out, no big deal. Not that you look for it, but I'm talking about even though your partner might not look for it, I'm telling you, you need to start looking and recognizing and appreciating one another and what they do for you, what they do for your family, and what they do for the relationship. And you're going to feel the intensity kick back up. You are going to feel the passion start returning in your relationship, people. Okay? You're going to start feeling that. When you start doing things for one another and recognizing the simple thank you. You know what? That's cool. You did that. That is so... That's awesome. Thank you. Simple thank yous. You know what? I appreciate that. That's cool you did that for me. Instead of, you know, bashing each other, what you don't do, and start criticizing, ripping apart. Maybe you start ripping apart one another, start criticizing one another because, ooh, you feel taken for granted. You don't feel appreciated. And that is going to start the intensity to decline in the sex life and the passion and even feeling it in the way you kiss one another, hold one another, in the way you touch one another. I have a a newer couple I see and he is like, okay, I want to do my own thing. You know what? I'm not I there ain't no way, Greg, I should tell her where I am all the time. I'm like, dude, you know what? It's not about control. It's about mutual respect and mutual appreciation and common courtesy in a relationship. That doesn't mean, you know, every five minutes you're checking, okay, I'm at this stoplight. Okay, I'm on this. No, that's ridiculous. But, you know, once in a while, this goes in, it's not being controlling. It's about being respectful to the relationship and being respectful to your partner. And you wonder why the intensity of the relationship has killed you know what? You feel like you want to do what you want to do, whatever. And it's like, why are you in a relationship? It's having the respect. Ooh, here we go. For your partner to say, you know what? When I'm over here, that's where I am. When I say I'm over here, that's where I'm going to be. I'm not going to say, you know what? I'm over at a friend's house and now son, I'm over at the strip club. Do you understand what I'm saying? That you say, you know, you back your words up with action people and that's another thing that you know can kill intensity in a relationship right you look at it's not a control thing it's a common courtesy thing and you're able to look at the dynamics about what the heck it's going to trigger okay you look at what it's going to trigger and how is it going to settle in Okay, and we are 
going to say good night. Ah, right. We are going to say good night. Yes, it's only an hour. Um, I'm going to kick it back up to an hour and a half shortly. So make sure, please, spread the word about the Art of Relationships radio show. You can check me out on Facebook, Greg Dzinski, D-U-D-Z-I-N-S-K-I, or even my uh, business page, Detroit's Love Guru on Facebook. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, my website, www.theartofrelationships.org, theartofrelationships.org, okay, people? Um, I'm all about helping people out. People that know me, they know the passion I have for one another. Hold on, we might have a call. Hello, this is the Art of Relationships radio show. Hello. Hello? Oh, we lost them. Okay. I didn't know if they're going to try to call back um, or might be a client scheduling an appointment. (laughs) Um, But um, I'll stay on for another minute, see if they call back very shortly. And it's 58, or I'm sorry, 313-614-9498. We'll see if they give me a call back or not. It might have been a client. But if not... um, so look at what you're doing to keep the intensity of love growing. Again, the intensity of love is the mutual respect, the mutual understanding, and the sexual satisfaction and the sexual craving you have for one another. And that doesn't mean it needs to be rip your clothes off. Oh, my God. Woohoo! Fireworks all the time. Sometimes it can be sparklers, like I said, sticking with the festive theme. Here we go. Um Hello, this is the Art of Relationships radio show. Welcome. Hello, third time must be a charm. <laughs> what was that? Third time must be a charm for me. For, yeah, I was able to finally catch it. I didn't know um, what's going on. I want to hear your comments and uh, insights. I have a question for you. Sure. My question to you is, what if the intensity after being with someone for 20 plus years it's not horrible, but it was super intense, and it's just changed as you've grown as a couple and grown as people. You still do the love notes, you still do the pleases and the thank yous, and all that stuff. How do you get that intensity back when you're the, doing that other stuff already? The intensity back, and that's a good question, because what happens is when, as we get older, you know, we, we, I talk about this numerous times on the show, about, you know, we evolve, and it's some truth that some couples grow apart because they're different people. We're different people when we're 30 than when we we're 20. But I try to get couples to work on growing together in the same direction at the same time, the same speed, I should say, growing together. And if you are looking at different things over 25 or 24 plus years together, you're going to be different people. And do you accept each other with those differences and how you grow? But you want to maintain, even though you grow as different people, can you still have the love and the intensity going on? And you look at how do you keep the intensity of love growing and going? And a lot of times it's about communication. Do you feel taken advantage of? Do you feel taken for granted? Do you feel that each other's needs have changed? And have you done a simple checklist with each other You know about your needs? Do your needs change or do you assume they still need the same thing to keep the passion and the intensity of love going or feel you know, important well, I, to feel? Go right ahead. I'm I sorry. Maybe that the way we, we both look at the intensity or the way that we look at love maybe changes and maybe we're not speaking the right love language to each other anymore. Or we still have the feeling maybe it's not coming across the right way that we can read it because we've changed with just growing up. Correct. And I think a lot of it, caller, is it has to do with, that's why I said about a status checkup, if you are a relationship checkup, to look at over the years, do you still want to be loved this way? Or that's where the communication needs to come in. And if somebody tells you, you know what, I want something different. I used to love this. Um, 
years ago, but now I don't love this anymore. I want more this. And if you're reluctant to listen, if you're reluctant, you keep trying to do the same thing you did that that person liked 20 years ago, um, you know what? Then the other person, you keep doing that. That person's going to feel not heard. They're going to feel like you ain't even listening. You're doing what you want to do anyways. You don't even care what I want, so why even ask me? And that's part of keeping the intensity of love growing, that you, you are able to adapt and evolve to each other's needs and passions and desires as they grow as an individual. And that's what I mean about growing together and evolving together, that you're able to ebb and flow and change with the needs of your partner. And it's that now, if you're growing and change and you're two opposites, now we're talking about did you just grow apart? And that's sad. And it does happen. And, you know, if you want totally two different things now um, than you did 20 years ago, now you're looking at, okay, what the hell do we do about it? Do we separate? Do we try to work on it? Or no matter what, we can see Greg, we can see whoever and get help with this. Yeah, and, Greg is fantastic. Well, thank you. I, I'm not perfect by any means. I'm also very humble. But you look at the dynamics of, um, you know what, are we just two different people that we want two different things now? And now, you know what, I don't accept the person you are now. And you know what, your partner doesn't accept you how you are now. Now what do we do about it? Now, the first thing I try to do with couples in those situations is try to define, uh, like I mentioned you, caller, I try to get them to define what they need now versus 10 years ago, five years ago, and how you adapt and evolve to those needs now. You know what? Maybe the wife, the wife used to love her ass being grabbed and, you know, whatever, grabbed, slapped, whatever. Now she don't, might not like that anymore. And if he starts, keeps doing it, and she's going to feel, you don't care what I like, you don't, you're not even listening to me, you're disrespecting me, that's going to kill the intensity of love because a lack of respect, and you're not going, he's like, well, you used to love this 20 years ago, 5 years ago, 10 years ago, and you're still doing it, expecting. That's what I'm talking about. You need to change and adapt. Now you look at, okay, is it really that important that I grab her ass or spank her ass in the way I did 20 years ago? Or, yeah, yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Sometimes it is, right? Yes, um, it is. That's where you try to learn and adapt. And if you are totally at two polar opposites of those spectrums, 20 years later, as you did mention, call it 24, 25 years into it, then now you have to look at what the hell's going on. You have to look at what's going on in a relationship. And that's, you know, I didn't even touch on um, the biological aspects about, you know, the intensity and the passion aspects. Like, I, you know, I always do on um, most shows, I talk about, you know, testosterone levels, women going through menopause, um, all those aspects that you look at, you know, the male hormones and, you know, you look at estrogen levels in women depleting and testosterone levels maybe decrease in males. You need to look at, okay, blood pressure issues. All these aspects can play a trigger on not only sexual intensity of love and the passionate aspects or intensity of love, they also can, you know, wreak havoc on emotional aspects because of lethargic behaviors, being tired, energy levels. These can all kill the intensity of love. So you need to look at all these aspects. And if everything checks out, those are okay. Now you're looking at, okay, do how do you want to be loved now versus 5, 10 years ago? And it's okay. You might want to be loved whatever the same way you were 20 years ago. But they need to understand, yeah, I need to keep doing this. And if they don't and they don't care to do that anymore, now you're going back to the element where I mentioned of, you know what, do you want different things? And, you, you know, you're going to feel if they stop doing what you want and need, caller, you know this. You're going to feel you're not important. 
you're not desired, you're not cared for, you're not loved, maybe you're not cherished, and maybe they don't have it for you anymore. Why, you want to tell me why you wouldn't feel those things? If they stop doing the things you need, or they won't do the things that you want or need. Why would you feel loved? You want to clue me in on that? Right, exactly. Because I can't, I, I can't answer that. If someone was with me, and I've been in a few <coughs> relationships. <laughs> um, yeah, Detroit's love guru. Here we go, single. Ooh, baby. But <laughs> being a hypocrite. But no, it's all about working together, and I want that. And if one person is unwilling, and they keep saying, you know what, this is me, too bad. If you don't like it, too bad. Ah. <sighs> You know why? That tells me you don't care enough about the relationship. You don't care enough about me, and that's going to kill the intensity. And why would I be in that situation where, you know what, they don't care about my needs? And I'm not talking off the wall. I'm not talking extreme. You know, that's different. I'm talking about, you know, the average needs of feeling loved, desired, appreciated, those aspects. And then you start turning into a tit for tat. Well, if I'm not getting my needs met, screw you. Why should I make your needs met as well? And that's where you both drift apart. The withdrawal and the intensity of love, of course, is going to be killed. And anyone, if your needs aren't being met, I'm like, you want to tell me why would you feel loved, desired, appreciated? Why would you? That's part of the self-love that you have, and why would you allow that in your own love life, in your own marriage, in your own relationship, that your needs, the feel loved, appreciated, are not there. They're not cared about. That's sort of, it's sad. It's very sad. And there tends to be a battle between the self-love and loving your partner or loving you know your husband your wife whatever partner and there's that that battle between self-love and what you hold righteous to you and i'm not talking being what was that i'm sorry i think self-love has a lot to do with it um it, it could be a lot in a lot of relationships and you know earlier we talked i talked about a new couple i've been seeing and I, I asked her, why would you be, why would you want to be, and right in front of him, why would you want to be in this relationship if your needs are not being met? And he, really, he's telling you, he don't care. He wants to do this, this, and that, and that's it. Now, if that is a situation, why would you want to be in that situation? Why well, I love him. Really? Do you love yourself enough to sacrifice why would you sacrifice all your needs to feel loved, to feel appreciated? The hope that they'll change. It's not easy, is it? No, I would think not. And I, what I mean, and I try to hit on, you know, I try to hit on those elements that, you know, I don't, I got to be careful, even when I'm seeing clients in my office and maybe on the radio show too, it's a little different, maybe a quicker format. But I tell people that, you know what, it's, it, it's not as easy, and I get that. I might say it in a matter-of-fact or blunt way, but I get it's not easy. It's when you love somebody and you want them to love you back and you don't, there's a part, I'm not saying you give up. No, you want to try everything you can. But when it's done and said and you've done everything, you've tried everything, you've been disciplined, you've been, you know, busting your ass to get that other person to shake up, something needs to change or you're going to be miserable you're going to you're going to be in a relationship or marriage where you feel unloved not appreciated that your needs don't care and do you want to be reminded of that on a daily basis i'm going to tell you now and me being a professional in my personal life the hell no i would not want that either i'd be like peace out i can do everything i can as a professional in my personal life as well and you know look at this but if that other person doesn't care enough what do you do and 
that's where the intensity of love, um, it affects every aspect of your life, the sexual life, the intensity, how much you know time you want to spend together. Before, when you start dating somebody, oh my God, you want to see each other 24-7 if you both feel connected, you both feel that, that love, that factuous love I mentioned about the romantic love at the beginning. That, oh my God, you can't get now, you know, 25 years later in a relationship, marriage, 10 years, whatever you want to say, you're like, damn, I don't want to see you as much anymore. And it's like, yeah, that hurts. It's about, you know, that new love feeling to it off of the cliff. Just catching a little bit of that. Yes. In some way, like recreating the relationship and, to have that new love feeling. And again. that's, I don't, I want to. I, I call it the new love feeling. I want that's why I call it about the intensity of love that you still have it. And what I mentioned earlier about that when you kiss each other, you still feel each other's souls and that love feeling you have for another, or when you stare in each other's eyes. But you can have it in a more deeper, more understanding about the ebb and flows of your relationship and the intensity of love, the ebb and flows in that, and you sort of accept it. You don't accept it. You know what? Eh, it's mediocre. It's like this all the time. That you settle? Not at all. But you want the ebb and flow. And you know what? If you only have the ebb without the flowing of the intensity, now you're talking about settling, right? And it's not a fun situation to go in. And I'm all about trying to kick it up and spark it up. And it comes with mostly hitting on the mutual respect for one another and not taking each other for granted and you know that their feelings matter that's where the foundations start at by recreating the intensity of the love that you have for one another i thank well, you thank for you. your you've given, you're giving me a lot to think about thank you so much no i appreciate the call thank you so much too um, All right, thank you. No, thank you. You have a good night, okay? You too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, I'd like to thank the caller for that. Some great questions. Um, and keeping me on the air longer. So I appreciate that, too. Um, so hopefully, like I said, share the episodes. You can always listen to recorded episodes at your leisure with the Spreaker app. Again, that's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. Download it, Apple phone, Android phone, don't matter, or Spreaker.com, the website. And you can also listen to recorded episodes on SoundCloud, on TuneIn, as well as iTunes, okay? So check them out. Um, I appreciate you listening to the show, everybody. Uh, Much love, much peace to everybody out there. The show is for you and to help people out there have a more ignited, more passion, more loving, more understanding and accepting relationship and marriage out there, okay? Peace out. Much love to everybody out there. Take care. Good night. The Art of Relationships Radio Show is copyrighted. No one is to use any part of the show without express written consent from myself, Greg Dzinski, or the Art of Relationships. Thank you.